Hey guys, it's the Friction here, Tiger Tank 1, 2, however you call me, I don't really care. Welcome back to World Tanks. Hopefully my microphone quality is a bit better now because I'm using several different programs. I finally managed to get my entire audio fixed. So um, the mic quality, audio quality should be a lot better. Let me real fast um, dial down the sound a little bit uh, because I've noticed that the in-game volume is usually quite loud so today we're going to be reviewing the fv4201 chieftain proto this is a british tier 9 premium heavy tank and i think it is probably one of the better premium heavy tanks at tier 9 that you were able to get so how did you get this vehicle and why am i making a video on it well this vehicle was only available during the um, waffenträger event where they were selling loot boxes and I got very lucky and I opened two of them and I did receive the Chieftain prototype. Um, those were the last loot boxes I have opened in World Tanks. And uh, yeah, I have not missed <laughs> spending money in this game. Um, it's very nice not to be spending a lot of money, um, especially when you have a lot of premium vehicles. But yeah, the Chieftain prototype, obviously it, it, it was going to cause quite a mass hysteria when they announced it. Um, players were afraid that um, the tier 10 could be um, coming to tier 9 and it's going to cause a lot of havoc. Uh, turns out this thing is a lot better balanced than the tier 10. It has some weak spots on the turret, the hull is not the best either and the gun itself um, is fairly good but it's not on the same level as the tier 10. So overall I would say it is a good tier 9 premium vehicle but it's not an exceptional tank like the tier 10 is. And that is already a very good thing to say. It is not as shitty as the T-54 Heavy. This is a horrible tank, and that is a vehicle that we're going to be reviewing in the near future as well. But today we're going to keep to the Chieftain prototype, and I've played quite a few games in it, um, and I have to be honest, um, sometimes I don't really know what to think of the vehicle. As you can see, I have one mark of excellence. I have about 69 games in it. The average damage is not the best, 2,321 over like 70 games, that is not that great. But the damage and destruction ratio is still okay, but the armor use efficiency is not that great, as you can see, 0 0.69. So I'm making some mistakes with it, and I'm also seeing that um, the armor is not as reliable in certain scenarios, such as the E75 or the Moissian, <laughs> which is a very unfair comparison to make since those are super heavy vehicles and they are not supposed to take the same role as the Chieftain prototype. So let us take a quick look at the characteristics and hopefully in the end I can kind of give you an outlook if this is a vehicle that might fit your playstyle and you might want to pick up in the near future when it comes in any kind of sale. I don't know, it might pop up in um, one of the um, several auctions Wargaming usually does throughout the year. So yeah. Maybe you might be interested. The 120 millimeter gun that you have on this thing um, is pretty nice and we're gonna start with it. Um, 400 alpha damage, not too shabby, really good penetration, 262 millimeters with the standard AP round. And then you have the 310 millimeters of pen with the premium round. So yeah, both APCR and then you have a whopping 120 millimeters of penetration with the hash round that you also fire. So the gun itself is formidable. 1,150 meters per second shell velocity on the standard round and 1,350 on the premium round. But another thing that is sadly not as great as on the tier 10 is that you're not going to have the same or very good reload time, uh, 12 seconds reload time on this vehicle. I think it's more than fine with the alpha that you have you you have an average dpm of 2000 the dispersion values and the aim time on the other hand they are holding this tank a bit back in certain regards um it's just does it does not handle as well as the tier 10 um at least from what i've seen the tier 10 is like uh, exceptionally well i haven't played i haven't seen it in a while now but i haven't played tier 10 i've only played tier 9 so the games that i did go up against tier 10s i haven't really seen chieftains anymore might be because Wargaming did a couple of nerfs with the vehicle itself. But overall, uh, if you are using consumables such as pudding and tea, uh, you're using um, improved rotation mechanism, you're using 
uh, gun armor class one and then also vertical stabilizer class one you're going to get your vehicle down all the way to dispersion 0.32 aim time still not going to be at the best um rate 2.5 seconds still a long time to aim in especially for a tier 9 heavy tank but you have 10 degrees of gun depression you have quite decent gun traverse speed um but overall yeah the vehicle is certainly able to uh, deal quite a bit of damage when it needs to and uh, with putting and uh, with a gun rammer you can get the dpm all the way up up to 2500 which is probably something you want to do because we're getting to another point where we have to talk a little bit about the weakness of this vehicle that is whenever this thing sits out in the front of uh, other vehicles that shoot it this tank does barely have it barely has any armor 80 millimeters at the front 60 on the side 35 on the rear now if we do compare that to the tier 10 so let me real quick um see if i can find the tier 10 here um I'll probably have to oh right there it is yeah it's that one right here um let us take a look at the vehicle details yeah you can see quite a big difference 127 millimeters of hull armor still not the best but you know that's about almost 50 millimeters more armor on the front of the hull 89 on the side that's 29 or almost 30 millimeters more armor on the side and uh, also about 30 millimeters more armor on the rear yeah whenever this thing is side scraping it's very easy to go right through because it's just 60 millimeters of armor so be careful when they are big tanks with big guns they are just going to go cut right through your side armor when you're side scraping it's probably not something you're going to be doing with this tank most of the time you're going to try to fight with ridge lines and keep your hull hidden that's the best idea turret armor on the other hand is formidable as you can see we're going to go into the armor viewer yeah you're not going to cut through that very easily um very very thick from the front now if you do have to side you can see that the gun mandle here is a bit exposed and you can shoot right through here um but yeah that is one thing that um a lot of tanks have so just keep that in mind if there are two tanks fighting you uh, they can just go right through your side turret because of the way at least on the left side because of the way that the the gun is like exposed and it's like very flat there then you also have the cupola on top the cupola is on average 160 millimeters thick so no issue to go right through most of the tanks at tier 8 tier 9 will be able to cut right through the cupola at least if you do hit it frontally and that makes it a bit harder to play um, because the chieftain at tier 10 doesn't have that cupola and um, thus it's very difficult to take care of and i think it's a very good way to balance this thing out to give it a cupola and uh, yeah it's way easier to take care of and it's not this overpowered vehicle that you cannot fight and i think that is good game design by wargaming at least yeah i think it's balance mobility wise this thing is actually not too slow um the chieftain at tier 10 um is also known for being uh, quite rapid to be fair uh where was i sadly my game just kind of froze so i had to restart the recording but yeah talking about mobility with the chieftain um prototype it's actually pretty rapid at least in terms of top speed specific power to weight ratio is still a bit of a problem um since you only have now <laughs> keep in mind um only uh yeah for a heavy tank 15.35 horsepower per ton is pretty decent without any of the add-ons right i'm not using equipment to boost the mobility and i think it's fast enough to get you from point a to b you're not going to be the very first heavy tank to get in the fight but you can usually travel uh, behind the medium tanks and then get there in time to support them um before you really like run in as the last person you're still going to be coming in as the second wave and i think generally speaking that's fine enough by me traverse speed as you can see i i buffed that quite a bit um top speed uh, we have the reverse speed that i've improved a little bit um with field modifications which we're going to take a look at real quick afterwards as well but yeah generally speaking i'm quite happy with the mobility now if we would go over to the um chieftain at tier 10 uh, you can see that it is uh, the same speed it used to be faster if I recall correctly this thing was nerfed so when they nerfed this tank 
they nerfed its mobility and i think it was faster with the torpor you could go up to 55 uh, 50 kph and now you can only go to 45 which is about the same level as the chieftain prototype it's still fast enough to keep up with other vehicles but you're not going to be able to get into those positions that only like medium and light tanks usually can go to um, because you're not going to get up to speed fast enough but i think that's fair overall i think it's a tank that you can work with um, at least mobility wise and you don't really have to worry too much about it but you might want to improve it a little bit depending on your play style now the, the base view range is at 390 meters as you can see with premium consumables with a good crew you can get it all the way to 454 now that is more than enough uh, you're going to be able to spot a lot of vehicles that are coming your way and um, yeah this is a tank that is not completely blind now these are the modifications i chosen to take now maybe um, i would have taken or maybe now i would kind of switch uh, to the all-terrain suspension to keep up with the other vehicles um, you know to keep the top speed because i think the traverse speed right now is good enough but i always like it when my tank is able to traverse faster so i've been doing um pretty well with um this kind of loadout right now um parallax adjustment you know that's usually what i go for um periscope electric drive uh, i'm gonna take this down duration because usually it's only one artillery piece or maybe two um you can live with that and um, it's going to be annoying either way even if you have like 10 seconds less or like three seconds less damage and stun uh, i think i can live with that and then finally power output tuning to allow me to reverse and yeah i think the second slot you can obviously go for um mobility as well um i've gone for firepower in the end it doesn't really matter because the equipment piece i have in here is the improved rotation mechanism and um, it's going to get boosted either way with firepower or mobility so yeah um having talked about the field modifications let's dip right quickly into the equipment piece why would i go for gun rammer improved rotation mechanism and vertical stabilizer i noticed that the vehicle turns a bit slowly also with the turret that it feels sluggish and i just want to have a tank that feels responsive and that's why i went with improved rotation mechanism i think it helps me more than being the first one at the fight also because the dispersion on the vehicle when i was playing without it it just felt a, a little bit too um unresponsive and i didn't like that i want to have a gun that is responsive a gun that is reliable and i noticed that if i have improved rotation mechanism and vertical stabilizer together i do have a pretty impressive gun and i'm able to play it in a very effective way now one thing i want to point out real fast because i'm on tanks gg on my phone the moving and tank traverse dispersion factors are at 0 0.22 which is not very good but if you're moving over to the turret traverse it's at 0 0.13 so if you only turn your turret without your tank your dispersion values are actually not that bad but as soon as you turn your tank with the turret the dispersion becomes really really annoying and that's one of the key reasons why i've decided to still utilize the vertical stabilizer class one but i'm open to suggestions um like overall i think i'm performing quite decently with the vehicle but i'm always open for you know better equipment loadout to make this thing even better um, because it's a tier 9 premium vehicle you're probably going to be playing it a lot because it's going to make you credits and bonds as well two things that players always need and i think generally speaking um if you have a vehicle like this why not equip it with the best equipment that you have available so improved or bounty equipment right um for me personally i just have my bounty equipment all over the place i have no clue where it might be um but yeah i've, I've been enjoying the chieftain proto so let's jump into one or two and let's say two gameplays so you guys can see what this tank is all about we're going to talk about the weaknesses that i've already talked about such as you know the armor that is um kind of weak in certain areas but very strong if you're in a hold down position also talk a little bit about the gun and like obviously the equipment that i use to make it better and also the mobility um because it's quite a big factor if you want to play this tank effectively because it's a versatile heavy tank um you can use it to drive with the mediums you can go brawl with it in a in a city where you can 
hide your lower play, uh, or you can just kind of stay back and uh, be an effective sniper at range. But yeah, we can talk about that all uh, in the replays. Okay, as promised, we're gonna have two gameplays that I wanna show off. First one, we're on Tundra, top tier. You guys know the drill. It's going to be a bloodbath for all of those tier eight vehicles coming our way. I think we don't really have to hide anything. This vehicle does very, very well against lower tier opponents and same tier opponents. But the second game is a tier nine, tier 10 matchup where we are actually able to utilize the armor effectively and um, where we're still able to fight back effectively, but where our kind of limits are shown very clearly. So right here, first gameplay, I just want to show off the incredible potential you have when there are targets that you can just fight easily in the right setting. We're playing on the map Tundra. Uh, we're pushing the uh, F9 area, the F9 grid. We're gonna go, pu go push the hill because if you win the hill on this map, a lot of the times you're gonna be able to win the entire match. And since this tank is not the slowest, still takes us the longest to get here, but we had the furthest spawn, or at least the furthest away spawn, uh, we're still going to get into a very nice position where we can do some serious damage. We get our first kill, uh, it's Uda 16, and now we are in a position where we can really use the great turret armor. But this turret armor has its limits. As you can see, the CC2 or CC1 MK2 is very smart, very smart cookie, and uh, he hits us immediately in the cupola. But what he can do, we can do as well. Um, we shoot the uh, the patent tank, and I want you guys to actually look at the ammunition I'm firing. I'm using the hatch rounds, and look at this poor tier nine patent vehicle. He just lost a casual thousand HP to us with two high explosive shells, and we're gonna finish him off with the third round. Yeah, 465. That poor tier 9 reward vehicle just gets absolutely devastated by 120 millimeters of high explosive squash head rounds. And that is something you have to have respect of. Um, this thing has some very deadly high explosive rounds and they will tear your vehicle apart if you have a very good um, you know, position. Let's say flat surface, side armor, rear armor these weak spots like with the patent it just shows you how bad the patent really is as a tank and how incredibly bad the gift is that wargame gave us <laughs> just want to underline that once more because i have the feeling that wargaming could have evaded the entire thing if they would have just given us uh, the patent and made it a premium vehicle at least in that sense um it still had like a little bit of a uh, redeeming quality but right now that thing has absolutely no redeeming quality there's no reason to play that um yeah now we're switching over to premium apcr i know i'm a filthy uh, premium round spammer now i'm trying to go through the cc1 mk that's a very heavily armored vehicle i'm trying to hit right beneath the gun mantle because it's kind of flat and i know that sometimes you can pen it but it's actually a very tough hide on that thing so i'm just gonna use this with a 16 to close the gap with the tortoise on the, our right and hopefully i can get a shot into the upper plate because the upper plate on that thing is pretty um weak in comparison but we have already lost about half our hp and you can see that both of the hits that we suffered um, went right into our cupola and um we switched the target to the caliban because it's uh, it's a lot easier to um, punish tier eights than tier nines and uh, to be fair a lot of times it's a uh, it's more fun that shot, I have no clue. I probably set it into the dirt. So, yeah. The, the gun in this thing, uh, even though I have quite a few um, different um, equipment pieces to make it more accessible and just to make it overall um, better, it still uh, is a bit of work. Um, it leaves the re reliance... Um, well, it kind of... The, the big issue is just that the reliability of this gun is not always there. Uh, and that's probably one of the most annoying things when you're playing a heavy tank, when you don't have a reliable gun. But you obviously can live um, without the most reliable gun in this scenario. 
but it's nice to have a reliable gun. But very casual, very quick. This match only takes about five to six minutes. We clean up 3,693 damage dealt. Um, 1,600 of that damage is all coming from the unfortunate patent tank um, because that is not a very good vehicle. And uh, I just want to show off the Hesh shells and how devastating it can be. But in the second replay, um, the Hesh shells will actually be even more devastating because we're going to be using it uh, against a tier 9 medium tank. And uh, this match is going to um, finish off now without our... Um, uh, our um, engagement there but yeah pretty good tank played in the right position but obvious weak spot which is the cupola there um, the players do know that it's there and you have to be cautious because the HP pool does dwindle very quickly so let's move on to the second gameplay and that's where the real interesting um, things do really shine or come to play when you're playing the uh, chieftain protag as you can see, the second matchup is certainly not in our favor. Uh, we have about half of the vehicles in both teams being tier 10 vehicles and some very gnarly ones. Uh, very quick spoiler about this match. The Horis are going to be a massive pain in the ass and so will be the FV4005. Yeah, basically pretty great matchup not the best place in a tank where the armor is subpar at best i would say it's it's best in a setting where you have a uh, the advantage the hull down advantage but as soon as you're out in the open oh boy these horries will eat you for breakfast now uh, we're playing on airfield and airfield has been tweaked quite a lot so we're moving to a map that i haven't played all that often and we're already making the very first mistake there's a bz 68 um, he hasn't fired yet, but I expected him to actually shoot one of those two guys here, and we immediately lose um, almost 600 HP, uh, also getting our ammo rack knocked on that at the beginning of the battle. So, um, yeah, only a little bit more than a minute played, and I'm already down uh, about 30% uh, of my HP, and <laughs> yeah, now I'm... Um, also out of my uh, my repair kit for the next 60 seconds so i have to be a bit more cautious this is a matchup where i do not want to get damaged too early on and where i want to conserve my hp because uh, there are going to be a lot of tanks that we need to fight this is a longer game and this is a very close game as well so yeah these games don't happen very often in world tanks anymore one of the key reasons why i am kind of moving away from world tanks because the the games have become a little bit one-sided but uh, in the recent uh, few months or the, the recent two three let, let's say about three or four weeks uh, i've had some interesting games we have another patent tank and sadly it's it's another one of those tier nine poor victims uh, possibly a um, Possibly uh, a bot, and as you can see, we're switching over to high explosive uh, squash head rounds because it works so well on these patent tanks. And um, yeah, th this vehicle is not inaccurate, uh, even at distances, especially if the tank is not moving. Uh, but you're not going to hit every single time, as you can see. The second round does swerve away from the cupola and it goes into the turret, but still, we deal 101 damage um, to probably the most heavily armored part of the vehicle so yeah that poor pattern absolutely at the wrong place possibly a bot but i don't want to be uh, bot hunting anyone or bot shaming <laughs> people and so yeah there are two t57 auto lowers on the other side uh, i'm waiting and i'm hoping that i can get an early shot on one of them and fall back in time because i do have 15 kph in reverse but uh, it's it's a gamble, and it's a gamble that usually does not pay off. I got very lucky there. Uh, it's not something I would recommend. And uh, immediately in the aftermath, I realized how dumb that move actually was. If you if you would have tracked me, um, yeah, it would have been game over for us in that situation uh, because we need the HP. But so far, so good. We've bounced the patent tank, uh, 400 damage bounce so far. We've done 1,500 damage in total. Um, and our team is still 
It's doing pretty well. Uh, enemy has lost five vehicles. We've lost four. Uh, patent tank <laughs> moving into positions where they are absolutely not supposed to be. Uh, that seems to be uh, the norm when players are running around in their patent tanks. That does happen when you gift a tier 9 to everyone. Now the next mistake uh, is coming up. I'm trying to go into the position of the SD2 without realizing that the whole re is in a position where it can actually shoot me there. It looked like he was behind a hill. I didn't pay enough attention and I catch a 620 damage round already in the very first five minutes i lost more than half of my hp and now i have basically become very much crippled i cannot do those engagements often or basically i can do it one more time um, maybe survive another whole ring shot but other than that um, everything else is just gonna fart on me and i'm gonna die you can see our team is now uh, in a very awkward predicament. We have all of the vehicles basically lined up on the CDE line. Nobody is really playing the middle. And that's going to be ultimately um, a very big issue because you can see FV4005 um, has decided to flank around and play the middle part. Um, and that's going to be a bit of a very big killjoy for our team. Uh, I want you guys to pay attention on the minimap to the Udes 1516, uh, who is at E6. He's moved himself into a position where he cannot get out of. If he moves back through the channel he drove into, he's gonna get fired by the. Uh, he's gonna get shot by the whole re3. Uh, if he moves down the middle slope, he's probably gonna get shot by another TD or uh, the shaft tour. And um, sadly, he moved himself into a position where he couldn't do anything, and the FV takes its second victim that fe player is doing a fabulous job i can uh i can assure you guys he is playing very very uh smart game he's playing a very smart game um it's very awkward when you're in a predicament such as this uh, there is not a lot of um mobility uh, not a lot of places you can actually drive to without getting shot in the back so you have to be extremely cautious when you're repositioning so that you do not get shot in the rear sometimes you have to take your risks and uh, what i want to do right now is i want to help these guys out um, and you know stop the uh, the push coming in from the middle because they have a lot of um, movement a lot of room to to actually uh, make our life miserable now and i'm looking for the fv i'm looking for the shafter and you can see that the FV must be somewhere over there. He must be behind one of those two bushes, either the left or the right, because he has just spotted us. I'm not expecting the Shaffer 204 because he's probably still at F5, F6, but I'm expecting the uh, FV 4005 to be in a position where um, he might actually be trying to snipe us. A very dangerous tank, and I got lucky that he didn't blast my face off. And as you can see, uh, I, I, I'm thinking about where he could be. Um, firing another round into one of the bushes. I get spotted again, so I'm expecting it. It's actually, it must be the left bush. Um, and right there, we fire. And look at that. We actually hit the FV. It was a high explosive squash head round. Uh, didn't do any damage. He missed us, luckily for us. And there comes the Shafu 204. And he's going to feel the, uh, well... The, the brunt of the high explosive squash and round from the British um, tech tree and you can just you can just see it. it's devastating <laughs> that guy just lost about a thousand HP to us and the tiger mouse who's sitting at the back took care of him in the end this matchup has devolved or evolved evolved yeah evolved into a pretty interesting engagement now um, they do have the uh, advantage at least in terms of well they don't have the advantage in terms of hp neither in tanks since we're even but they have the advantage on the map uh, they have more map control than us and you can see it's coming into devastating effect we just lose our t124 to a nasty shot from the fv4005 because he fired at one of the tanks got lit up uh, by the probably the t57 and then the FV took no chances and knocked him out cold. I think it, it was basically a one shot right there. Um, very awkward scenario because we just lost one of our main tank destroyers that was sitting in the back that was able to support basically 
every direction. But we're still fighting strong. We still have plenty of HP here. Um, we have a Yak Pansy 100 who's doing a pretty good job. We have uh, the... Uh, here, what is it called? The Badger. Uh, we are still trying to find our way and see if we can hopefully maybe take out the GSOR uh, 1006 uh, or maybe even uh, engage the T57. The worst thing I can do right now is to go around the corner and engage the T57 uh, but he, because he's probably expecting us to, to come around the corner. So I'm just thinking about, okay, let's fall back. Um, let's see if we can uh, use the, the strength of this vehicle, which is a hull down play to um, help out these two guys that are fighting the Hori and the WZ. The Hori, turns out, I have never really played against the Hori. Um, they're incredibly sturdy, um, anything on the upper plate. And I do not have enough pen. 310 millimeters is not enough to allow you to go right through um, the flat surface. But you can see just how strong the armor of this thing can be uh, if you're in a hull down position and they are unable to hit the cupola. Either they don't want to shoot the cupola or they uh, are basically not interested or uh, they're missing it, you know, can happen as well. Haven't played the whole E3, but it turns out it's a pretty cool and interesting tank. Um, at least in my opinion, I think it uh, looks pretty cool and uh, it plays like a more mobile Yak Pansy 100. And once again, I'm making a big mistake. I'm trying to go right through the flat part. Um, I'm expecting it maybe one out of uh, one out of three shots gonna go through um, but yeah to no avail very difficult situation right now because our Yak Panzer 100 is now rushing to the Badger's aid Badger is getting pushed by the T57 uh, we lose the Badger I know that the Yak Panzer 100 is gonna um, probably die in a second if he uh, pushes too aggressively and you can see the WZ 111 takes his chances moves in flanks around him and now we have to go and help him sadly we do not have the rate of fire to really help this yak panzer e100 uh, in the sense that we can actually you know save him from getting destroyed by the wz and in this scenario i realize it's a two versus one now the panzer Kampfwagen 7 is still engaged with the whole he's not going to be able to help me um and uh, the tiger mouse is too far away so i move back I sadly bounced the T57. If that shot went right through, um, yeah, we would have wouldn't have been able to kill him, um, but it would have gone given us like a chance to one shot him the next round or the next shot. And in the end, um, we basically survive. We take out the WZ, which was very important. And now we have the problem that the Tiger Mouse is sitting at the back, and we know that he's not looking into the middle because he's trying to support us. And that means that the FV can basically get into position surely and slowly and probably shoot us from the middle. Now the issue here is, uh, in retrospect, um, I should have probably made a play on the T-57 and I was hoping that the Hori is going to make a move where he's going to be very aggressive. We bounce another two rounds from the Hori 3, um, basically allowing us almost uh, 4,500 damage bounce. And then in that moment, I thought, you know, perfect, the Hori is making a move. That's where I can shoot him. And I was hoping that the Tiger Mouse would have my back if the T-57 was coming around. But I completely, um, I kind of completely ignored the FV-4005 um, moving into a good position. And he basically ended the game and he um, secured the victory for this team. Our, our Tiger Mouse player... Um, now I don't want to be mean or anything, he's probably just a very inexperienced player. Um, and, well, yeah, sometimes you can win all the games. Uh, but he's now still fighting uh, his, his last battle and you can see, oh, he's got something coming up his rear and it's going to be pretty nasty. Leaving him at 11 HP, that high explosive squash head round basically devastating this Tiger Mouse and he now... Um, switches target to the FE and I think it's a one shot for him if he's able to get a shot off uh, he just just has to be quick and careful that the uh, T57 does not finish him off and ah sadly he uh, shoots the building and the FE fires a I don't even know what is it 
an 8k or 16k credits round <laughs> to finish off the vehicle with um, 11 HP. So yeah, um, that was the gameplay and I think uh, we were able to see just how resilient the FV4005 is, the Chieftain prototype. Uh, I think out of all of the um, premium vehicles, this is probably, out of the heavies at least, this is probably the one that I like to play the most. I dislike the T-54 Heavy. Um, I played the light tank and um, it's basically all the three premium tier 9s that I own. I don't own any more. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a pretty nice tank. Uh, it works if you play it to its strengths. And um, I think other than that, uh, it, it is a little bit of a tiresome tank. It's a bit annoying to play if you don't have the right equipment. It's like it feels incredibly weak in certain regards. But um, if you have the right equipment, if you put a little bit of time into this vehicle and you play it through to its strengths, um, aka being the tank that goes into um, these hard to push um, uh, your hull down positions where you have like 10 degrees of gun depression and you kind of try to hide your uh, weak spot on top, I think you can do a lot of damage. Um, against tier 10 tanks with a lot of armor, you have to, uh, you have to be a bit careful. You're, premium APCR pen of 310 is not going to be enough against those have super heavy vehicles um, but that's just what happens when you play in a tier 9 and in a tier 10 matchup but as you could see the squash head rounds the high explosive uh, squash head rounds are incredibly potent and dangerous against any vehicle that is very thinly armored and they are a great asset to have overall it's a tank that doesn't have the best rate of fire does not have the best pen it does have very good pen on the standard rounds especially but it doesn't have the best premium round pen it doesn't have the best performing gun but i think it's still a very viable tank to play and if you like this kind of gameplay where you're playing in a hull down vehicle you're you know um, taking pop shots and you're fighting uh, across little ridges and into little valleys and uh, you like to be a bit more mobile than maybe a T-125 or um, other vehicles that are similar to them. I think this is a pretty damn good premium vehicle that will um, offer you quite a lot. And that's why I'm giving it the friction stamp of approval. Um, <laughs> I'm now making or rebranding this thing or the, the reviews and uh, it's going to get my thumbs up um and uh, my yeah basically my thumbs up i like this tank um and if you liked the british heavies i think you're gonna enjoy this one uh as a premium it's gonna make some credits it's not the best it's not the worst it's basically pretty evenly balanced it has some great gimmicks with the high explosive rounds it's a tank that you can really do well in, but you have to be a bit careful when you play it. It's not easy to master, but once you've mastered it, it's a very reliable tank um, that is very enjoyable, and I think it's a great purchase. Yeah, hope you guys did enjoy this little review. As always, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, have a good one.